Thank you.
Hey, all right. Hey, welcome. Welcome to St. Luke. Uh, we're glad you're here this morning. Um, you may see some palm branches around the church. Uh, we had the kids process, uh, processing earlier and waving the palm branches. It was just a delightful time, great energy, uh, and so we had a lot of fun. Um, before we jump into our worship th this morning on this Palm Sunday, uh, a few announcements. I know, Sarah, I know you have some. Yeah, right there. Good morning. I wanted to remind you that this coming Saturday is our egg hunt, our Easter egg hunt. This is a great time to invite grandkids, kids in your neighborhood, um, your own kids to come and hang out. We're, we're, it'll be at 10 a.m. We'll hunt on the front lawn, and then we have lots of activities inside. So we'd love to have you join us. We are still looking for a few volunteers to help us run some of those activities. So if you are interested in helping out, we'd love to have you. I also wanted to let you know that <laughs> this coming, no, on April 30th, which I know feels like far away because we've just started April, but you got to get it on your calendar, right? We're having trivia night again. So put together a team, and it's a lot of fun. We will have a potluck at 530, and then we'll have our professional trivia caller at um, 630. And I hear there might be a prize or two, um, but at least bragging rights, right? It's going to be a lot of fun. We had a blast last year, and I hope you'll join us. So um, I've got a few quick announcements, and then, Marshall, I think you do too. Um, just to know about two weeks from today is April 16th. It is, it's a special Sunday we call Day of Service. And on this day, we, we cancel our sanctuary worship services, and we go out into the community to serve our neighbors. And so we have about eight or nine opportunities to, to serve, and we're going to let our worship look like serving our neighbors on that day. And so um, there is information in the QR code and in the weekly email. If you would like to sign up, that would be great. It's just a great way to be a participant on that Sunday. Um, other things that are happening. We have our flower fundraiser once a year for our youth, and that's happening uh, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. This year it's different. Normally we just give you a form and say, hey, which flowers do you want? And we, we bring it to you. Um, we're inviting you to come this year, and we're making it a three-day event instead of a, just a one-day. And it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. You'll be able to see the flowers that you want and, um, and purchase them and take them right with you. So we hope that'll be a, uh, a better experience for you overall, as well as any things that you buy help out the youth program, which is always appreciated. This afternoon, if you want to come at 4 o'clock at 24th and Lake at the MLK Memorial Site, the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance will be there. They're going to, we're going to lay a wreath there this afternoon. It's a short service, but it's an opportunity to remember. Coming up this week will be the, the anniversary of uh, Martin Luther King's assassination is why we're doing it at this time. Also, on Monday, Thursday, we're having a service here at 6 o'clock. We're having it. Um, we're, it's going to be a service around the table. We're going to have food and all. Craig's put together a menu that next year, I think if it's the same menu, we're going to have Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, and Monday, Friday, because it looks wonderful. So if you can come, come be a part of that. Um, also, for uh, Easter Sunday, you know we always have Easter lilies that we put in and around the church. Uh, we always have to buy a bunch in a, a group. So some of them have not yet been uh, claimed, if you would like to purchase one of them in memory of someone else. And Chris, it seems like I got some other announcements that I'm forgetting. Ah, I'll think of it later, tell you then. Um, oh, we're going to do that at gratitude time. So, gotcha. Chris. Ah, Joanne.
As we light the candle this morning, um, I invite you to join with me at the words on the screen and in your bulletin. The first, first line only. May the Christ in us see the Christ among us. The second line, may the Christ in me see the Christ in you. Please join with me in the opening prayer together. God, whom we call love, you welcome us into this time of worship and remind us that this world, this place, and this moment belong to you. You welcome us as strangers and travelers on a journey we do not always want or understand. You ask that as we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort those who mourn. O oh God, we ask that as we learn and grow and attempt to serve you and others, we will be given the grace to love you and our neighbor in all that we do. We pray that at the end of each day, we can say to those to whom love is a stranger, will have found in each of us generous friends. Amen. All right. Hey, we, we come to that point in the service where um, we're invited to share the good things and yeah, maybe some of the not so good things that have happened recently. Um, who's got some good things to share? Okay. Ms. Shirley. I had occasion to celebrate the 33rd anniversary of my 40th birthday. Indeed. Uh -huh. I shared this earlier, but then I remembered it was this service. I sh originally shared it in. My friend had twins. Katie and her husband had twins who were born at like one and two pounds each. And this week, a few months later, they've shared with us that they are doing so good right now. They're getting big and they look like people. And they just have oxygen, um, um, nasal oxygen, and nothing else. All right. Good things, good things coming your way. All right. Give, my, give me my exercise. Thank you. <clears throat> Today is my mother's 97th birthday. And awesome. we were so blessed to celebrate with her in her assisted living facility yesterday with lots of friends and family. So we feel blessed that we've got to keep her this long. You can grab the mic from her. Go ahead. You can tell us. I went to the park. You went to the yesterday. park? Yesterday. Yesterday. All right. All right. Can I? Thank you. Those are great celebrations. Um, 
anyone else. Celebration, a good thing. All right. Come your way. On Friday, my father retired for the second time. <laughs> Congratulations to him for that. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, anything not so good we need to remember? Just some prayers and. All right, Madeline. <laughs> uh, this past Monday was the ninth anniversary of my dad's passing, and given everything that's happened with my mom and everything, it hit really hard this year. And please just keep my family in your prayers. All right, thanks. Anything else? All right. Hey, find a, find a comfortable spot in your chair. And let's pray. And as we pray, um, remember our breaths. Remember the breath for yourself. Remember that um, in this vast universe that somehow God notices us and that God loves us and shows his affection towards us. Take a breath for your neighbor, whoever that neighbor is. Different face, speaks a different language, lives in a different part of the world, um, they're still your neighbor. Take a breath for them. And take a breath for this moment, for this day, filled with uh, potential and possibility, filled with joy, to, waiting to be discovered. God, we thank you for this world that you've placed us in. We thank you for the seasons of life. They remind us that um, things change. And there's hardship and sorrow, and there is joy and happiness. And somewhere in that pendulum swing of life, God, you are there with us. You remind us of your presence. You celebrate when we celebrate. And you grieve when we grieve. Whatever this week ahead for us holds, God, we know that you will be present with us, that there will be opportunities to see, to hear, and to feel your presence. We thank you that you have given us this gift of Christ in our world. We are reminded of the way that he has taught us to pray when, he, when we remember the words that he's taught us, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I invite you to take a moment to stand up, go greet everybody, get a little wiggling done, because then you're going to sit and listen to the choir. So say hello, greet one another.
grown up? Um, during, the, during the campaign, over the last few weeks, we've taken this moment to mention something for which we are grateful. Um, lots of you were here last week when we announced that we, uh, at the meal, that we had reached our goal for our capital campaign. And what I can tell you is we've got more. We've got more. Currently, we have pledges for $1,742,200. And twenty dollars, right? Now, I could tell you that was the official count before the nine o'clock service, because Roger already knows we got more in in the nine o'clock service. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you the next total next week. Here's what's going to happen happen through the months of April. We're going to collect up. I'll tell you how it's going, and we're going to just uh, communicate to folk who haven't yet responded. Some folk have already told me, says, just wait. Just wait, we gotta, we gotta go get our taxes done. We gotta go get some, you know, it'll, we're coming. So we'll tell you about that. And then on April 30th, we're gonna ask folk that if you can give some now, please do. If you can give a chunk now, please do that because if we get some money in the bank, when we begin to do the actual construction, which no, I do not have a date for when they're gonna start yet, but when it happens, we won't have to borrow as much money. So at the end of April, there'll be another special Sunday. And I'll just keep you posted about things in between now and then. Um, as Bridget reads, I don't know if you could see it on the screen. You'll be able to see it in your bulletin. The indented parts, when it says, and you have heard it said before, they're really parts of scripture that, that the author um, is quoting, having, is having Jesus have, having put into the story. So here you go. Today's... Today's lesson is from Matthew, book 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on, the colt, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. It was just a few days before the Passover feast. Jesus and his disciples were making their way to Jerusalem. A large crowd heard that Jesus had stopped in Bethany to share a meal with his friend Mary, her sister Martha, and their brother Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. People gathered to observe this prophet who had demonstrated such miraculous powers. The crowd continued to grow as Jesus and his followers approached Jerusalem. As he entered the city, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. See? 
The day for the Passover feast finally arrived. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted them to go and prepare for their own observance of the Passover. He instructed them to go into the city where they went, where they would find a man carrying a jar of water. He would show them a large upper room furnished and ready. It was there they, would, they were to make their preparations. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples gathered and shared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took bread gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
After Jesus and the disciples finished the meal, they went out to the Mount of Olives to a place called Gethsemane. Jesus said to them, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him. He said to them, stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but your will be done.
When Jesus rose from prayer, he went back to his disciples. There he found them asleep from exhaustion. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a crowd who had been led to this place by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas kissed Jesus on the cheek so that others could identify and seize him. The angry crowd led Jesus away, taking him to the home of the high priest. Peter followed at a safe distance. In a trial filled with deceit, the religious leaders were seeking evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death and rid themselves of this so-called prophet. Meanwhile, Peter had been approached in the high priest's courtyard where he was quietly sitting. You, you are with him. You are one of this man's followers. The accusations directed at Peter prompted his immediate denials. By the time morning arrived, the religious leaders had determined to put Jesus to death. They led him away and handed him over to Pilate, the governor for the region. It was the governor's custom at the Passover feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, a notorious prisoner named Barabbas was in custody. When the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which of these prisoners do you want me to release, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ? The angry crowd responded, Release Barabbas, crucify Jesus. Pilate resigned himself to the will of the people. He handed Jesus over to his soldiers who took and flogged him, put a robe on his back, and placed a crown of thorns on his head. Then they led him away to be crucified. was betrayed, rejected, condemned by his very own, yet he chose to bear sin's heavy load. He was denied, abandoned by those he came to save, and alone he walked Calvary's road. Betrayed by Judas for thirty silver coins, and a gentle kiss in the garden where he prayed. Denied by Peter, his faithful, loyal friend, the rock who said he'd love him to the end. Christ was betrayed, Christ was rejected, rejected condemned, condemned by his own, yet he chose to bear sins very long. He was denied.
Having been condemned to a criminal's death on a cross, Jesus was led to a place called Golgotha. Two other men were placed on crosses on either side of him. The soldiers, many in the crowd, and even the criminals alongside of him, mocked and derided him, saying, He saved others, but he can't save himself. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. Let God save him. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, and then he breathed his last. The earth stood silent as the Savior of the world died in fulfillment of God's ultimate redemption plan. This humble man, being in very nature God, had made himself nothing, taking on the role of servant, being made in human likeness. He had humbled himself and become obedient to death, even death on a cross. A Roman centurion who had been part of the execution of Jesus was overwhelmed by what he had just witnessed. Truly this was a righteous man. Sacrifice. Truly, this 
It was now after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. The guards were so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples, Christ is risen as he said. Sing hallelujah. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead.
Thanks, Squire. It was fun. <laughs> Thanks, Johns, for singing all the right notes in my ear. That was really helpful. <laughs> hey, the Sarah Benediction, and then we get to sing, and then we'll set for a moment and listen to the postlude. Join with me. Now, let us go in peace to live a faith that matters, to grow in the love of God, and to serve wherever we are led.